What's up, everybody? Welcome to Crypto Files episode 11. I'm Jesse. Along with me, as always, is Kelviston Killbot. There's a name I haven't we haven't heard in a while. Yeah, you're resurrecting an old name. What's up? What's Did up, I, people? That was your Twitter ha- name for a while, right? A lifetime ago, sir. Well, like two, three years ago. I think when I met you, that's what it was. Oh, you're talking about Twitter, are you? Yeah. Hey, okay. check this out. Why did have I been on Twitter a couple weeks now? I mainly got on there to talk to my bro, my brother, my friend, my uh, other host here. Hey, get on Twitter. Okay, I will. I'm on Twitter, and you still have not responded to me once. I swear I did once. I have to, okay. Because I read, read a lot of books. We know this. Yes. And I see I, your book thing. Yes. I'm very I'm bad start at putting porn. See, what bothers me is Twitter, It's a, the app's supposed to have, like, notifications so you know when you get something, so I know when to actually check it. But no. it doesn't tell me. But, yes, I am only three, I'm only three books away from hitting my goal of 75 books this year. You get a sticker. I want one. I want, like, a squash. What was the last thing you read that was good? I actually read a book about Bigfoot. Oh, was it Kiwani Lapsaritis? No, it was not, but I'm going to read read Kiwani Lapsaritis very soon. Can't wait to hear that. Um, It's called Creature. It's by a guy, Hunter Shea is the guy's name. And it's about this woman who has some kind of autoimmune disease that's basically killing her body. That's hot. Like when she moves her arm and stuff, her 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 uh, shoulders and stuff will pop out of her sockets. And she has to push them back in. Like it's really not. It's re- as they say in Moto, it's really gnarly. Oh, it's gnarly, brah. That's and really that's a trip. It, it is so like emotionally taxing. This book. So it's about her and her husband. They go to this cabin for time away, and I'll just say they're being stalked by a creature, and like. It takes probably to the halfway point of the book for the creature to start showing up that turns out to be a Bigfoot. Like, the rest of the time, you're oh. getting to know these people and, like, heart-wrenching about her. They, it, the way it describes her disease, like, she's basically living in hell. Glory. So you get, like, Bigfoot, Bigfoot action, but at the same time, you're like, this is the most depressing thing I've ever read in my life. <laughs> but it was Does really he good. pop her shoulders back in? No, her husband does at some points. And, like, it'll talk about her walking to the bathroom, and she talks about the stabbing pain because her knee just popped out. Oh, man. And apparently it's a a real disease. Like, she had the autoimmune disease on top of, um, oh, what is that called? Lupus. Oh, 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 yeah. So, like, she has a cocktail of shit. But it's a very good book. Like, I recommend it to everybody. Oh, that'd be a Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah. There's some great Bigfoot action, but you also, like, really care about this woman and like the shit she goes through every day yeah um tonight we're doing our first double feature i think robots robots oh wait no not robots no no robots swamp thing and creature from the black lagoon sir return of swamp thing sorry return of the swamp creature from the black lagoon i'm in wouldn't that be an awesome title for a movie oh yeah there's some similarities we'll get into that so what what have you here yeah, you know what? They are cl- one of the most people would say is a classic. The other one, you and I say is a classic. So it's a effing classic. You say it's not, we'll fight you. I mean, you got to wait to know if I like that movie or not. <laughs> so, what have you checked out since we recorded last? Anything you want to talk about? Oh, I got something I want to talk about. I finally, I'm I'm always way behind. We've got something to talk about. Isn't that a song? Oh, Bonnie Raitt and. uh <clears throat> I'm always behind on movies. I'm oh. behind on music. I'm behind on clothes. I'm behind on everything. I'm Canada, okay? I finally saw Hereditary. Oh, I don't. Just the name of that movie makes me gets me excited. I don't know if I've seen it, uh, said anything about it uh, before. You uh, haven't on I, here. You let it. Sweet. The last the last show you had said that you were going to watch it. Okay, I got it. I got it on 4K Ultra. Oh, that's right. That's right. I watched it after the show. That night. that's right. Hereditary was awesome, um, pretty much as you described it to me. Kind of leaves you with a <laughs> oh, that that kind of empty, echoey feeling. And we're going to be doing it for Halloween, everybody. Yes, we are. I, I look forward to watching it. Again. We're going to do that in this little. I don't know if anybody ever heard of it. It was an indie film called The Witch. Oh. The funny thing is, it actually was an indie film. <laughs> yeah, it kind of was. 
I just think they I were love, like perfectly paired together. Like they were, I had the I same so. feelings watching that as I did with the witch. Yeah, not 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 necessarily kid. Uh, kids didn't fare so well in either yeah. film. And there was a gut punch in that movie, and I I text you. I, I just I agree completely right with what you said during the week, and I did not see it coming. And it's fairly it's fairly early in the film. If anybody yeah. says they saw that coming, they're lying. I'm sorry. Oh. I wouldn't do, I, I wouldn't even let my cat do what that girl was doing in a vehicle after seeing this. I don't, I, I won't spoil that. But, but it was great. Um, I think I complained to you a little bit about the storyline, uh, of a cursed family. Yeah, you and, did. Uh, you know, when a week goes by and you've thought about something a little bit more, I, I guess I've, I've, I don't even know if my complaint was valid because that storyline was just fine. It explained Sir, do everything. You, do you think, I know we're going to cover it on the show, but do you think I should force the fiance to watch that? If she can take the gut punch. That's true. <laughs> like, I feel like she'd be able to take that one easier than the gut punch that's in the beginning of The Witch. Yeah. Because that, yeah, that's a little rough. I think so. and, and God bless her. There, there's a, you know, some people talk about in film uh, creepy children, and even if it's unintentional. Yes. And, and some people have talked about Carol Ann like that, and I don't. I think she was just an adorable little child. I never thought she was creepy. But I have heard people that have said that. Oh. Um, huh. Certain children actors, even you know. I'll tell you one. Oh. Yeah. And I always get confused on which kid was which, but Isaac, I think, is the one I'm thinking of from Children of the Corn. So oh, definitely. Was he the one with the really kind of fucked up voice? Yeah. He was yeah. Kind of yeah. He scared the shit out of me when I was a kid and first saw that. Oh yeah, I could I could see how that would absolutely. But there's this little girl in this movie, <laughs> kind of free. I know that's not PC, and and she's an adorable, sweet little girl. Yeah, but they did a, she did her like she played her part. Like that's a compliment, I think. And I, I don't know if it was intentional. I guess it was intentional. But yeah, it, 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 you know, bless her little heart. She was awesome, and uh, the brother was awesome. I think all the acting all the way around was awesome. And uh, the main girl lady, she's been in quite a few films. She's in her 50s, and for the life of me, I cannot think of her name. Tony Collette. That's it. Thank you, sir. She was great. As I she said before, we're going to... Gonna... She wants into an attic. Yes, we're going to cover this, but I have to say, I've, I'll say it again on the show when we do it. I don't think I've ever seen grief represented so well in a film in my life. Oh, it did. It really acted. It was just the tone of it, wasn't it? I mean, she, honest to God, seemed like a mother that was going through that for real. Oh, and, and when they give her the news of, of, a, of a death, and you oh hear my. moans, you just, oh. It made me want to, like, break down in the theater. And it also had, there was a creepy level to it. Uh, you'd see something across the room, a person, and it was almost, was that, was that, were they really there, or was it just a mental imprint? Yeah. Uh, I got that a few times, and, that, and whether, you know, I, and it makes me start seeing things that, that aren't even there. And they, they did a real good job. Like good sound footage does for me. Sometimes. I can't wait to get into it though. Yeah, I can't either because we just did it practically. <laughs> yeah. awesome. That's one of those movies though that Watch I feel it. like I could talk about over and over again. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm glad I paid. I'm glad I dropped the coin for it because it's like. I'm glad you liked it because I felt horrible if you wouldn't have and you bought it because of me saying. This. No, that's okay. I, I heard a couple people say it was good. Now, um, someone online said they didn't like it. I don't remember who it was. It, I don't think they. I don't think they like the execution. Something about you and it. I both know. So I yeah, won't. Fair. I won't yeah. say them on the show, obviously. But we both know someone that didn't like it, like the same person. Hmm. They complained about that and the Babadook, which I love oh, that movie I, as I well. Like that. It reminded me of the Babadook quite a bit, actually. Yeah. Because I kind of liked. Yeah. Huh. I got gotcha. you. Oh, and what else I've watched? Let me get through this. Oh yeah, take your time. Uh. Oh, here we go. Uh, I watched, in the vein of Universal, I watched uh, House of Frankenstein, 1944, and uh, it's one of those kind of rehashings. Of, I don't think I've seen that one. It, it's pretty good. It, it's definitely not my favorite, and uh, it's John Carradine's like, Dracula. I feel like those are like, there goes Skype, us talking over each other again. <laughs> I was just going to say, I feel like those, even if some of them aren't, my fa like, aren't your favorite, I can always put them on, and like just they're easy watches. Absolutely, and they're good background, you know. And this one isn't my favorite. I was going to say John Carradine. I love John Carradine, you know, especially his older, as an older man. You know, he did a lot of uh, cameos and like the Howling. You know, he was uh, the old man in the Howling. 
I didn't know. I don't like John Carradine as Dracula. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. feel it. He, he, I always thought he kind of looked like a farmer. And no diss on farmers, no diss on anything, but I just, that's not how I view Dracula. And I'm not one of those people who are just in love with Bela Lugosi. Like, he, he has to be Dracula, you know. But that's where I'm He was great, you know, but I also liked uh, Christopher Lee just fine. And uh, later on, of course, Gary Oldman. I loved him. Graham Stokers. But despite all that, love the movie. Um, it's fun, exactly what you think. Just kind of a monster mashup movie. And it's, it was on my Wolfman Legacy collection. And uh, it, it had that. It has House of Frankenstein, uh, House of Dracula, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Oh, my God, I love that. I do, too, and I should have watched that. <laughs> it's, it's funny, after I watched it, I was like, oh, it's getting late. And uh, I know these, and I'll talk about it when we do our, our first movie tonight, but these legacy collections have gotten really cheap. They're about 10 bucks for the DVD, and you get all those movies, ton of bonus features. And the Blu-rays are out now, and I'm sure they're even better. You know, with Halloween coming out, these will be at Walmart. I highly suggest it. Also, okay, uh, counting, getting done here. I watch Andy Warhol presents Frankenstein. Or How is that? Frankenstein. It's weird. Like, is it really too weird, weird that I wouldn't get anything out of it? Like, I feel like it's a very... No, very there's a lot of dialogue. Oh, okay. There's a lot of dialogue. You probably would. It almost has that kind of grindhouse-y feel, like, kind of like the Ilsa films, like She Wolf the SS. And oh. All that. Almost has that, but it's got a, our good old Udo, Udo, Udo Kears in it. And uh, he's kind of in love with his sister, and they have these two weird kids. Boy, is that creepy. Kind of, that is a little creepy, a lot creepy. And and the, their kids are these two little sadists who are kind of like Winsy and Pugsley. And, well, that's, that's pretty much the movie. Um, and as far as anything else I've watched, has mostly just been series. I finished Ozark Season 2 finished Jack Ryan, and I'm almost depressed because Jack Ryan was so good. Season one, I was kind of hoping there was a season two on there. But there's not. As you they understand. announced it was renewed like before it even aired, though, so we're definitely getting a season two. Exciting. Um, you said you watched a documentary. Yes. Um, last night, like you said. Thank you. It was a Universal, and it's probably, I have a Universal Blu-ray box set that this beautiful man on the other end got me for Christmas with... Uh, his other co-host on his other show. Um, Doesn't that seem so long ago, though? Blu-ray. So, yeah, I've had that for It just feels so long ago. Yes. It's beautiful. I love it. I love you guys. Thank you again. And it's got, oh, there's all kinds of uh, universal or monster documentaries on that disc. It's the Monsters Collection. And I assume this is probably on it, but I watched it on YouTube. And it was just uh, the universal... I think it was just called Universal Monsters, and it's a documentary. It's over two hours long, and uh, it's all the Universal movies, first to last, the horror films. Um, full, pretty good review of each of them from David J. Skull, and uh, it's really good. I'm going to put it on your wall so you watch it. It is really good. I have a couple questions about House of Frankenstein. Yes. Well, actually, only one. How does... The guy who the Frankenstein look compared to like Boris Karloff's Frankenstein. Oh, strange. Yeah, like how is he as Frankenstein? Um, I think this House of Frankenstein actually has Boris Karloff as Frankenstein. Oh, I, thought, I don't know why I'm thinking. No, that. I guess it is Glenn Strange because it's uh, Karloff is like the uh, I guess he's a he's a mad scientist who steals a kind of takes over a, a traveling uh, freak show. I guess that was strange. Well, that was late when I watched that. I should have been able to say. I think he looks okay. He didn't bother me. Okay. In any of those at all. Not like Dracula. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wondered if there was like a big difference like there is with that. Uh, I don't I don't feel so much with, with Frankenstein. He's like darker green. I'll say that. Well, <clears throat> on to me. This isn't really, you know, paranormal related, but you commented, I've watched a shit ton of gangster movies and there's more on the way. Eh. And I feel like I should do the whole show as this way, see, you rat. You dirty rat. Um, yeah, I've seen them on Facebook. Some of those look kind of interesting. They, uh, they're all, I mean, I usually, I rate now out of five and the lowest I gave was a three, but even that was good. Like, if you like that sort of thing, I think they're all good. <clears throat> like I pretty much just like looked at a list of recommended so they're all pretty much universally loved so I was like I can't go wrong with those 
Cool. I saw the Predator. You didn't track your movies. How, what number are you on? I the next one I watch will be eighty eight. Oh, you're clicking through, man. Which better, seems better. seems good, but then when I look, Facebook does the whole like memories thing. Two years ago, this time I was at like one forty. I was so, like something. Yeah, mine popped up the other day. My excuse for this year is that at that time I was dating the horrible ex, and we would like watch three movies at a time because she just sat there and did nothing. So. Oh yeah, one of those. Oh, yeah, I think I used to be with her sister. Probably were. I saw the You're predator. That's why you don't watch as much. You're just happier. Yeah, I mean, I try. I, I was doing the thing where I tried to like watch a movie a night, but there's so many like series and shit now that I get you stuck did. on. Yeah. But I saw the predator yesterday. Ooh. And as I said, you know, on Facebook. It's different than any of the other movies in the series, but at the same time, I had a blast with this. I mean, there's cool. issues, there's some issues with it. There's some things I'm like, oh, what the fuck? But then I'd laugh out, and I think it was Alan commented on somebody's post that he he didn't want, like, humor with his Predator. But it works, because there's, like, funny things that are said with the, between the humans but then he'll go and just, like, fucking rip someone's arms off, so the brutality's still there. Cool. I started to say, but we had comedy in the first one, but actually I'm, I'm thinking through the first one. I don't think we did. <laughs> Maybe I know Jesse you, I know in you, the chopper. Yeah, <laughs> he kind of was, I guess. I know you'll watch it because you, I mean, you'll give anything a chance. Mm -hmm. You're like me, but everybody needs to give this a chance because it just don't, I don't want to say low expectations because I had high and I still liked it, but just go in and wanting to enjoy it, not critique. Like, actually have fun watching a movie, and I think you guys will like it. Is it comparable to Predators at all? To um... uh, You mean, like, what do you mean by the comparable? Mm, I don't know. I, I thought Predators, uh, what's his face, the director? Um, I thought it was like a love letter to the first one. Yeah, no, this one's not. I mean, there's some things like. Because it obviously wouldn't be. It's different. And, like, it's hard to. It's, it's more of like a fun adventure action movie. Okay. Like I okay. loved Predators though. I loved it. But this is just like I too, too. Too different, I think. Okay. Like the blood's there, the I mean Rodriguez. The, I'm sorry. Oh I'm yeah. Rodriguez. If you're listening, I'm sorry I didn't reference yes, you. If you're listening, Predator. come on, we'll interview you. Please do. I love your Predator. But it's so different, but at the same time you get all the brutality that you would look like. I really liked it, so check it out. Basically is what I'm saying. Typical horror sci-fi. I mean, it's what you you're getting what you go into wanting with a predator. And anybody that criticizes it, I will say, oh. watching as many but, movies as we do, I've seen far worse, especially in the theater. So, I mean, like it's not bad compared to some of the shit we've seen. But I think that's pretty much it as far as like things that w would fit in here. Oh, we finished Grace and Frankie. My mom and I. Oh, cool. Now we have to wait till some time. I'm, I'm about to. Two seasons behind you. It is so good. I mean, I like God, it's so good. I'm trying to think if there was anything. Oh, it was so bad. Yes. I forgot about it. There's something you watch you're not talking about. Yes. Do you know what I'm going to reference? Pornography. No. Puppet Master of the Littlest Reich. Oh, yeah, you did watch that. I wanted to love this because you know me and how much I love the puppets. Yes, I bought the box set because of you. I like the first one enough. And... I know. I it it's you. Yes, I know you did. Thank you. Another, another one. Go ahead. I know it. It's a different company, but and it was there was there was gore, there was brutality. Like that's all true, but that's not enough for me to like this and recommend it. Like it's too. It's like super serious, but with the puppets, like it doesn't work. Like it doesn't have that spirit of. I don't want to say the originals because I'm you know me like how I am, but. I think you need some fun with when you have murderous puppets and there's no fun in this. Like, it's a straight horror movie and it just doesn't work to, for me. Oh, so don't run out and pay 15 bucks to complete your Puppet Master collection for this one? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> no. I mean, and this is a little thing, a little nitpick, but they used, like, you know how when you have the Halloween movies and, like, everybody, no matter who made the movie, has a different, has the theme song? Yes. This is some, like, sci-fi channel level, we don't have the rights to it shit, and this theme that they put up is <laughs> fucking terrible. 
Oh, I'll have to look it up. Okay, I gotta hear this. Oh, like, man. it's, like, the only part of the theme that's still there is the dun dun. Like, you know, it kind of sounds yeah. like that carnival music. Sure. You get those two notes and everything else is, and I shouldn't have judged, but I'm like, I'm not gonna fucking like this movie. Hey, it'll set the tone early for a person. I understand. Yeah. Oh, but man. we did get Udo, Udo Kier in the beginning. Well, speaking of, yeah. He was huh. my favorite. He was is my he, favorite. is he, uh, is he the puppet dude? Yeah, he's only in it for five minutes. Spoiler. What's his name? Trudeau? Uh, Andrew Toulon. Toulon? Okay. Andrew Toulon. But they kept saying it was like Toulon. emphasis like it was French, which I guess it is, but. Now, was that his name in the original? Yeah. That's what, okay. And, and I think in the original he was played by, oh, I can't think of that guy's name. Like it was some semi-famous actor at the time. Oh, there's people screaming at us right now. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I feel like it was the guy. And who, Michael Vincent. <laughs> yeah. If you've ever seen Christmas Vacation, National Lampoon, I feel like it was the guy that played the uncle. Randy Quaid? No, like the old uncle that has oh, he, Christmas he, Vacation. It was, I think you're right. Okay, I thought it was. He talked like that. Yeah, and I think he's also in that movie Cat's Eye. Oh, and he talked like this. Hey guys, welcome to Christmas Files. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> Arctic. <laughs> oh, I almost said something else, but no, uh, not something else. Okay, no, I mean I almost said going old school, saying something else, but you know we don't use those derogatory terms on our show. We do not. So, which movie would you like to start with, sir? Let's start off. Let's go in in order of uh, okay. my date. Yes. Let's go back. We're gonna get in. Uh, we're gonna get out of our crypto files boat, and we're gonna get into the retail. And we're gonna go ahead down the Amazon sun back to 1954. We're gonna go to the Black Lagoon. Yes. Are you ready? I am. This was the, my mom when I told her we were watching this. She was like, "This was the year I was born." I'm like, "Did you see this? See this?" She's like, "I'm sure I did, but I don't remember." Did you bring your speedo? No, I, I'm I'm going commando, dude. Oh, in this water. Yes, I'm living large, and I'm, um, I don't even. I wanted like I don't know. In charge. My joke fell flat. Yeah, I have no fear. We're on the Rita, and we got Captain. I forget our captain's name, but I loved him. I did too, but I don't remember his name either. We're going back to 1954, and we're doing the creature from the Black Lagoon. And in my opinion, and people may scream at this, I think it was the last great. It's my last great Universal horror film. Boom, I said it. I think a lot of right. people say that. Right. Like, I've heard, isn't it pretty much the last one? I think so. Other than the sequels? I think so, because I think it went kind of more Hammer took over. Yeah. Um, you know, our classic monster films. They and, never you know, did this, a version of the creature, did they? No, they, I, not that I know of, and no yeah. one's touched this. Like, I know they've talked about a remake for the reboot. Yeah. That, you know that uh, Dark Universe of... Uh, that I guess isn't happening. That's fine. I, I, a lot of people are whining. Oh, that's just horrible. Don't, don't touch these films. I don't have any problem with it. You, you can do whatever you want with the Universal monsters, in my opinion, because they're always going to be around and they're, they're a force of nature, man. And this film here, I think it set off a pop culture phenomenon to this day. Yep. The Gill Man, you see him at Halloween. You see it everywhere. And it's just because of these these three films. Honestly. Yeah, it is. It's, it's its own animal, you know, <laughs> or reptile. It's, so you had not seen this. What did you think? I love this. I mean, I don't know why I hadn't seen it, but this was great. I mean, I love the whole, like, aspect of them trying to find it. I felt like, in a way, that he wasn't in it a whole lot. Like, I don't know if that's just me. Like, you might have been able to see him in mm. shots I didn't realize he was in, but he doesn't feel like he's in it much. It was kind of implied a lot. You see the hand. Oh, okay. A lot, a lot. And what I was wondering about as I was watching this last night, I was thinking about you, you know, who hadn't seen it before. What did you think of the sciency part of this at the beginning? You know, we get the, we get the, the whole explanation of this guy from, from the beginning of Earth, before Earth. <clears throat> well, we, when we did our commentary on, I can't even think of the name of that movie. I always told you I love, like, fake science. And I'm, I'm sure this is more legit than some of those movies, but I love sciency parts, so I ate this up. I love like that. Pseudoscience. Yeah, I thought of yep. you. 
last night on that. I'm like, how did you like this? Would you say the Gilman is the first pop culture cryptid? I think you can. I'm really, I'm racking my brain. I was just I trying think to think right. of that. I'm, I'm kind of thinking he is. Because the Wolfman, I mean, that was a transformation. Yeah, that was a that guy. Like, he, didn't, he, you know, he wasn't a cub, whereas the Gilman was a leftover relic from the whatever period. I think it was a made up period. It was a little Gabonian or something. Something like that, Gabonian? yeah. Gabonian? Anyway, yeah. But I think you're right, bud. Yeah, I think it was. But I, this was awesome. I mean, and I know you've seen this quite a few times, so you probably know it all by heart. Five or six times, probably. I can remember the first time I seen this. I was probably five, six years old. I watched it with my mom, and my mom kind of pumped it up to me. And I got to watch a lot of these Universal Horror movies with my mom. And our local PBS station did, like, late-night creature features um, on the See, weekends. I, I feel like I missed out. There's that me TV as that Svengoli now, but other than that, I feel I would have loved that when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. I like just that whole thing. thing. Yeah, well, like, we, you have that, and then you have the Kung Fu Theater. Like, I would want all of oh, that. Oh, right. And uh, my mom kind of pumped it up to me. She's like, ooh, it's Gil, man, you know. And even at five or six years old, I can remember, I, I knew who, who that was. It's like, ooh, that's a fish dude. You'll eat you or whatever. And I was glued to the TV and watching it last night. I can remember the same feeling watching this film, them, them arriving there, arriving on the dock. And, and uh, Julia Adams, even as a child, I was like, man, she's a beautiful woman. And she is a beautiful woman, this film. And uh, it is still effective. I think it's a lot of fun. And uh, I had a good time watching it, even better than I thought I would. Kind of got excited uh, to talk about it on here. You know, I think it holds up fantastic. You, you, you see a lot of people ask, hey, you know, my kid wants to start watching horror. What's a good one to... What, I what do I get into? Any Universal, I'd say. But especially I'd say any Universal except for maybe Frankenstein, and Bride gets a little dark. Yeah. And maybe I not could, Dracula, hey, because yeah. Dracula, a kid could see, is boring, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, he's boring with me as well. <laughs> I know, I was just going to say that. But, but this is perfect for that. It really is. You get this epic score, da -da -da, which is a bit much. I love that. Just, yeah, it is, but you got to love it. Did, did you ever get bored watching this, you know, on your first watch? Were you like, eh? No, because, like... For me, the Universals always fly by so quick, and this one was no different. Absolutely. I had the same thought. But once we see the creature the first time, um, when our group that travels to the um, – I think they're archaeologists. They're traveling down because they found a prehistoric hand of the creature. And this group of archaeologists, these two guys, this one guy's a real douche. He is. And I don't even remember his name because I watched it a while ago. I, I can't think of what it was. Do we'll call him. Or, yeah. Deuce McDoucherton. Rick Dyer. To, uh, he's a real and then we have Julia Adams, who I think is just a beautiful woman. And with her boyfriend, who is the other or is it husband, who's the other uh, archaeologist. And then we have kind of a professor type guy who kind of looks like Colonel Sanders. And then a lovable ship captain. I can't remember his name. To save my life. And, uh, but once we see the creature, the movie's just boom, 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 boom. I mean, all the way to the end. It just, it looks good. It's, it's tense. He's always trying to grab somebody. And there's a few kills in this movie. There are. I was surprised by that. Not surprised, but like, there's more than, yeah. usually it seemed like they'd have like one big kill. And there are a couple. Yeah, in my head, if you'd have asked me, I'd have said maybe one or two people died. Oh, there's four or five people, you know. Yeah, even a couple of the main characters get offed by this, by our yeah. gill man. And, uh, they call it that in this movie. I guess, I couldn't remember where he necessarily got the name Gilman from the films or just from pop culture. But, yeah, they do refer to it, to him as the Gilman. So we know that. Do they ever show him, like, a, side, not side by side, but mm -hmm. around a human? Like, do they portray him as larger than people? He's kind of like a tall person. Oh, okay. So he's not like Bigfoot like size. Okay. No, maybe not Bigfoot size. So he's not like you know extremely bigger than an average no. taller. No, uh, proportional to to maybe a six foot tall man in the suit. Oh, okay. And the suit looks good. I think even to this day, I think. That's the next question. There you go. I, I didn't see a zipper. Very. I've silver. always heard that joke, but is it actually true? Like in the old Godzillas, could you see the zipper? I don't think I ever seen a zipper. 
Okay. Sometimes it's on their legs. You can kind of see the fold of where the guy's foot was at. <laughs> I don't think I ever saw it. Okay. But this yeah. was, I am so glad I finally watched this. I am too. Yeah, I really am. And I'm really cu- curious to check out the sequels. Yeah, I, I've got them kind of queued up here. I'm going to watch maybe tonight. Watch those. And we'll, I think it's the second one. Um, the Creature Walks Among... You no, know, Revenge of the Creature. Yeah. Uh, but Clint Eastwood. <laughs> if you blink, you'll miss him. But he is. Now, was there any returning characters in this, or is it just the Gilman pretty much? I think it's just the Gilman. I don't believe... Yeah, I might be lying, but I don't believe Julia Adams is in the sequel. Okay. In the second... Believe. Somebody's screaming again at their thing. These guys don't know. I know Julia Adams looked fantastic in that white one piece bathing suit, even in 1954. And I'm not mean. I don't mean to sound like a pig, but she's very attractive in that. In this, however she many is, years, she's a dame. See, she's a dame. It's just it's kind of a timeless beauty. She just has a certain look to her. Beautiful I'm, brown I know hair. She's probably done more, obviously, but this is the only thing I really know her name from. Yeah, as with me, too, I don't, I don't, I don't see her in anything else. Someone else is like, she was in 1952's whatever title. I think she threw a lot of uh, teenage boys in the 50s into early puberty. <laughs> and they were probably like, she looks swell. And I think maybe at that time, it, this was a little racy, even that bathing suit and some of these shots. You know, I, I, I don't believe this could have been put out in the 40s, not just because of our underwater camera technology. I don't think the censorship would have let that. Let it fly because it's no, but it's revealing without being revealed. I'll just we'll just say it's very form fitting. <laughs> it fits a form, say. Fit or form. You do that voice better than nice. I do. Um, anything else on this, or do you want to rate it? Uh, I would. Um, there's tons of info on this movie. Um, yeah. Do you have any trivia? Underwater effect? No, I, I'm not going to get in. I was just going to say real quick. The okay. underwater effects and the guy in the suit. I mean, this this was groundbreaking for '54. It looks great, and kind of the way he crawls around under the water, like he's under the water, like under people, but he's around the the the, the, the ground, like the, where there's this gross Amazonian shrubbery. I don't know. I like swimming in creeks and all that. I'm a redneck, but if there's moss and that growy stuff and algae, I get really grossed out. I don't know. I just can't do it. And this thing lives down in that stuff. It was probably it, really it, hard to swim around that in the suit. I bet. I bet it was. But they do a good job of him kind of acting like, yep, this is where I go down. No one can see me. Other, you know. And uh, I guess this was shot in Florida. And uh, it's just amazing that in 54 they did that. Uh, you know, they pulled this off. and It, it still looks effective. That's it's what's amazing. Like, it still holds up. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was, it's done really good. It, 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 no, that, that's all I had. You know, like I said, there's a lot of info on the technical, how they ran the suit and um, – I don't know how long the guy had to hold his breath or whatever. Because I remember, like, hearing horror stories about, um, oh, my God, my mind went blank. Uh, Lon Chaney Jr. with the Wolfman suit and stuff. Oh, the hours of, yeah. I think I read where his wife still says that, or she's obviously passed now, but always said that was what contributed to his death, she thinks. I could see how it could be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because this suit, like, I'm not going to say it looks good anymore because I've said it like five times, but it looks good. And I have a mask. I have like uh, the Gilman mask. I'll have to put it on and put a picture in the group. But this is a classic. I'm glad I finally watched it. I'm definitely going to watch hey. it again. What? I said yay. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I think you said hey. Um, you said classic. I said yay. Sorry. Yeah, no. it is. Um, probably going to watch it next month here because you know me. How I I feel like I've said you know me like ten times. Today. You know me. Down with OPP? How, yeah. How I am at Halloween time, always watching, like, the black and white movies, so I'll definitely watch this again. Would this fit in in your um, Halloween marathon? Like, does it have that feel to you? Yes. Like, yep. Me too. Definitely. But I would give this four wood knocks. Nice. Right. I'll go four and a half. Got out there, yeah, you dirty rat. Look at you. Almost five. I'm going four and a half because of a little too much. Da-da-da! Yeah, that was kind of overplayed. I love it. it. It's like a feeling. Like some of these movies, you see them a few times, you kind of grow up with them, or, or even if you just see it now, it's like more like a feeling than watching a movie. Does that make any sense? Yep, you're exactly right. I agree. Some people would get that. And this is one of them for me. I'm kind of glad I watched it again. I think I'll join you next month and watch it again. I watch so, it with you. 
Speaking of suits, what is off the top of your head? What is we may have even talked about this if we did, but I don't remember. What is the best Bigfoot suit you've ever seen in a movie? Mm. Mm. Exists. Oh, okay. I think it exists. Now we're going to the 80s. I may I may cut back into you on that um, as we're doing our next because I got to think about that Bigfoot suit thing. So okay, you always if I scream out something weird. Worried, that's what so. it is. Okay. Yeah. I don't have the year. I know it's in the 80s though. And I'm putting a DVD in as you speak. Okay, maybe it'll, will it say the year on it? Yes. Hold on. My eyes won't focus. I'm really tired. Ah, Gordy, where is the year? I just had it. 1989. 1989's. We're going back. We're going. We're we're jumping in the crypto boat. What is that? What you called it? Sure. Yeah. I was, it was the SS Rita. Okay, we're jumping in the SS Rita again, Diarrhea. and we're going to the Bayou. It's time for Return Diarrhea. of Swamp Thing. Oh, born on the Bayou. I love that intro music at the beginning of this for the credits. I bet you did. Yeah, especially go. when, especially when he's like, "You can call me Swamp Thing." And it goes into the and music, and then I start the singing the music. I'm so, looking forward to doing this one with you for a long oh, time, buddy. Oh, my God, I love it. I, I'm, I, I can't even say anything. Pretend. I'm going to lean back and just let you go. So, <clears throat> I saw this one first when I was little. I remember renting it at the movie, at the video store. It was called Rick's Video was our local video store. Good old Rick. I don't know who the hell Rick was. There was never anybody, as long as I was there, named Rick that I know of. I think I knew Rick, yeah. He probably did. He's yeah. <laughs> They probably just, like, pick some random name to slap on it. Like, there was a guy that worked there named Gary, and then there was tons of women. That's what you were there for. And the boobies. That's right. And so, let me start off by saying this, ha- and I know most people are going to say the Uh-oh. first movie's superior. Like, they're, they're out there like, I don't want to listen to this. It's the first movie's superior. But hear me They've out. They've tuned out by now. It's okay. They have, but hear me out. This had everything. Like, to me, this is what I would think growing up. This is what a comic book, a movie based on a comic book would be like. It's fun. Oh, yeah. It's a monster. It's a good monster fighting bad monsters, which goes back to why I love all the Godzilla movies. Like, that's that's my favorite thing is to see, like, monsters. I love monster battles. You do. So that's why... I've always gravitated towards this. When I was making a Christmas list a few years ago, I was extremely excited it was on DVD. Now the damn thing's on Blu-ray, and I think it's the same transfer, which will make no difference to me. But I feel like I need to own it just because it's on Blu-ray. Do you have the DVD? I do. I feel like it's the uh, same. I wonder if it's the same as mine. Um, I don't I don't know. Does it have a commentary track on it? Audio commentary with the director, Jim yep, Norris. That's probably the same exact one I have. It's weird, though. Mine says, sold as a package, do not separate. I think it came free, or free, no, I think it came with a uh, basket case. I think mine did, believe it or not. It was like a two-pack at Best Buy. Oh, huh, that's a unique Oddly grouping there. I wish it would have been part one and two. Not They're the, so different. I mean, they, they, they are. Different. They're very different, yes. They almost uh, are different. And then, of course, this rolled in. Like, to me, this was kind of like what the short-lived cartoon was like. Yeah, I like the cartoon. Which is all on YouTube, I believe. This is basically, you know, Ali Holland gets turned into Swamp Thing. He's obviously, He is Swamp Thing by this point because it's part two. And um, this introduces Abby Arcane, who is played by Heather Locklear, who was she pretty back in her day? I'm going to be honest. Be like, honest. I've always wondered this. So, yes, be You're honest. You're going to get the honest... Uh, yes, she was. She was tiny. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Especially in this. I mean, she was really little. Lovable. But, yes, she was, she was, she was fine. The only two things I have seen her in are this, and Mom and I watched Melrose Place when I was younger. <laughs> you never watched the T.J. Hooker? I have never seen an episode of T.J. Hooker. Uh, next week we're doing T.J. Hooker. On- no, we're not. Okay. I have heard of him, but I've never watched the show. Okay. She, Who was She liked Dynasty. Hooker? I mean, like, who was the actor that played T.J. Hooker? William Shatner, sir. Oh, was it? Shit, I don't know nothing about it. And his partner was Adrian Zmed. Was that her? Zmed. No, Adrian Zmed was in a a bachelor party. I'm not going to make fun of and tell you what that last name is making me think of. Adrian Zmed. (laughs) We're going to do a movie with Adrian Zmed. (laughs) All right. 
<laughs> okay. So, um, we're not gonna buy you. It, that is a great song, though. Um, this is all about he's doing battle with evil Dr. Arcane, who's played by Lewis something. Jordan? J- yeah. He was an awesome bad guy. I'm going to interrupt you for that. I really like him. No, you could, he was yeah. like Skeletor good. <laughs> he was really good. Like cartoon good, yeah. I like the What's Her Face, too. He's another one I've never seen anything else. Lewis. Hmm. I have, but I can't tell you why. Like, he's familiar, you know what I mean? And this also leads in, I have season one. Is toilet? No, it's my fan. Oh. <laughs> I have season one of the TV show. I remember watching it when I was younger, but I haven't, the live action one. Have you ever watched that? Yeah, but I couldn't tell you anything about it. <coughs> I know they kill Abby in it. I think. Oh, no. Yeah. Who did they kill? I'm sorry, you coughed. A- sorry, Abby. And that's Heather Locklear? No, it's played by someone else. But that, that, okay. Yes, it's her. Yes, yes, yes. Did you like Adrian Barbeau in the first one? I did, but, like, Should've. I thought it was going to be based, like, I didn't realize, when I was little, I thought it was like, okay, this is the first one, and Return was the second, and I didn't realize until I watched it they had nothing to do with each other. So it always made me sad. I haven't seen it in years. It was serious, pretty much, wasn't it? It was, to me, I don't know. I know there's been some issues of the or the the comic book run was serious, but it just felt too serious for me. Gotcha. Yeah, that's one of the few comics as a child I've kind of was into with Swamp Thing, to be honest with you. And uh, I always kind of had a love for for Swampy. He, he seemed kind of bigfooty to me because he was more terrestrial, if that makes sense. Yeah. A lot of superheroes, woodsy, yep. swampy, whatever. And uh, yeah, I always I enjoyed this a lot. Like, like I said, I purchased it at Best Buy and. Watch. I hadn't watched it in years, but I remember one of the first things upon meeting your little behind was you constantly talking about Return to Swamp Thing, Return to Swamp Thing. I think with Jim Wynorski, the director, I think uh, when, when you friended him and we friend whatever on Facebook, you one of the first things you talked about, I believe, was was this film, wasn't it? I think I did, and then like he randomly posted on my wall that it was on Blu-ray now. That's cool, and he remembered that, you know? Yeah, and I'm yeah. going to reach out to him one of these days to have him on. Reach out I guess he, I guess he's, yeah, I guess he's making a TV show or working on trying to make a TV show based on Chopping Mall. Oh, yeah, I've been following that. That's that's one of my favorite films, period. So, period. Um, you know what it needs? What? Adrian's Med. <laughs> I can't stand I don't know why that name cracks me up. Um, so, Here's a what do you... Too. What do you think of the other monsters? Like, uh, Arcane is basically making these, turning these men into monsters. They're called the unmonsters in the cartoon, but in this they're not. I've never so, heard you get this much into a film before. This is cool. Yes, and, lead me through, sir. Because I, I feel like this is the first one where, like, I know. Usually, you know all the shit about stuff, but I feel like nah. this is the first one that I know. I can like you definitely. Oh my I, god, I've I, I've seen this at least ten times. So. I said to my gal in the drive-thru earlier tonight, I was like, I could just lean back and let Jesse go on this one. <laughs> what do you think of, like, the different monsters? I love them. It's cool. It, it feels like, it, and I'm the first one to bitch about comic book adaptations because I don't like them, but I'm not a comic book guy, so I, I can't say too much. And I'm watching it right now as we speak. These guys look awesome. They look like almost like Deadites or something to me, maybe, in uh, – Army of Darkness. I and think they, they all look. look they all look unique, right? Like they're not the same type of monster. I don't think. Oh yeah, they're all gangly and rubbery and and uh, mutant looking things. And I think they look great. They look fantastic um, for a film of this budget. Maybe I don't know. What, I'm not going to look it up because I don't care. We're not that kind of podcast. No. But uh, for a film on this budget, they look awesome. How does yeah, How does fun. Swamp Thing suit look? It looks great. Um, I don't know. Like I said, comparing to the first one. But he looks great, except maybe around the eyes. You tie, I can't really tell it's a suit, honestly. I was, you know, kind of looks like spinach. And you, I, spinach. I have to point out, I love the little kids. Oh, the little kids are awesome. They keep trying you to get part of the movie, like its own sub movie. I just want, like, I would have loved to see a movie just with them on some kind of adventure because they were great. Like they were had great chemistry together. Those two little actors. They were almost as good, if not better, than the kids. <laughs> And they were awesome. It makes me think of Monster Squad a little bit at times in this. I think one of them goes around to cons, but I don't remember which one it is. Mm, you should hug them. <laughs> um, what else? 
Oh, I love the stupid, douchey security guy and his stupid, <laughs> douchey laugh. Oh, yeah, with the hot security gal. Yes. I was going to say, is she hotter than Heather Locklear? Maybe in that 80s, um, kind of trashy way a little, but she wasn't really trashy looking. She looked mean. If you're into mean, if you're into femdom, no, she I didn't. She kind of sounded that. trashy. Like the way she, she might be. talked. She is into femdom, actually. It gets into it. But uh, yeah, a little bit. She's not ugly. But I love this movie. It's, people say it camp, it's campy, I guess. I've never used that word before, but it's funny. You have monster battles. You have the kids. They're great. You have a love story. I was just, yeah, I was just thinking about how to say that. Love story. I don't remember. I guess they focus on that a little bit in the first one with Adrian Barbeau and him, but I can't remember for sure. I just want thing they would be. And I also like the other, the doctor that was like his partner, the woman. Yes. Like she ends up redeeming herself at the end. Spoiler. She's been in quite a few films, like, uh, the second Conan movie, she was in that. I think she, she's I think she's really attractive, attractive older woman. Yeah. I have a thing, I guess, when Great I was actress. little. I guess I had a thing when I was little of seeing sequels first, because to, the second Conan I saw before the first. You get Grace Jones, son. Yes. And funnily enough, I like the second. Like, to me, it's more fun. It's more canon, like, uh... Yeah. style film than the first one, honestly. You know, I mean, I think, I don't know if they both are. I'm sure they are. I don't know. Yeah, it's fun. But I love this. And I'm glad I was so glad when we first met. I don't even remember how we started talking about it, but I found out I was not alone in liking this. Oh yeah, yeah. In the I know two people like, now well, counting you that like this. So I No, three I guess. Three. Yeah. You know four. Jim Winorski, director, I'm sure he likes it. It's no secret. Alan likes it, I think, and our our old friend Gary likes it. Oh, good deal. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do something I don't think I've ever done before. Oh, do it. If I did, you can point it out, but this is five wood knocks for me. That's how much. I just love oh, it. Oh, let me back up. Okay, go ahead. Yes, five. Oh, yep, go ahead. Okay. Well, you're asking about the gal, the, the our our our, uh, our feminine henchman. Here. Yes, yes, yes. I take that back. She's fine. I haven't watched this one. She, I've got it playing. She's fine. Yeah, she's great looking. She kind of looks have like Have you ever a, seen her in anything else? No, I do not. I don't believe so, but she looks a little bit like a, Angie Everhart. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, Angie, yeah. Five. Five wood knocks, people. You're going to have a squatch in your backyard tonight with five wood knocks. You probably beat the shit out of that tree because it's this film. It's like Candyman if you say it three times. If you say if you have five wood knocks, Sasquatch appears. Oh, good, because you're going to have to battle these creatures. They show up. I'm going to make dude. Like oh, that does not sound right. Squid face dude's pretty creepy looking here. Which one was the squid? The first one. Okay. Here comes Swamp Thing all muscled. Oh, yeah. So there's so, two monsters. Right? There's, there's a squid. Because he fights the squid twice, I think, right? Yeah, and then there's uh, another What's that other squid? thing that's in the uh, lab? I haven't, spot. I haven't got there yet. There was all kinds of mutants in the lab. All, I mean, all the, one, there's one, looking. the one that the doctors turned into he fights. I don't remember what it was. There's okay. People were screaming again. Put me on the spot. Blind Frankenstein, why did you do this? I did not mean to, sir. But yeah, Swampy looks good, man, in this. Like, you asked me that. He yeah. looked really good. It's awesome. Much like the figure I mailed to you. Yes, that figure is awesome. And I feel like, in a way, like, action figures, for me at least, gets I can kind of visualize by feeling the figure, like, kind of what it looks like. Sure, and you would with him. You kind of feel the binds. And the, yeah. It looks good. And I noticed when he's fighting the first squid face dude, <laughs> it's awesome when he punches him. The, the squid dude, like, slides like 30 foot down the beach. I love it when that's very comic booky. You know what I mean? It is, yep. Bunch and slide. It's cool. It is really cool. And we, were ta- we were talking about the uh, music in the first one, in the first movie tonight. I love the like Swamp Thing esque theme that runs throughout this movie, like when he's fighting. That like. I would make that my ringtone if I could, probably. I can see how people call this movie cheesy, but uh, oh, yeah, my God, the intro is long. Wow. It is very long, yes. Because here's the, the opening credits, okay. And you get a little uh, comic book intro, which is, it, it looks awesome. Born I guess I can give my ring. You. Yeah, sure, go ahead. I'm going to go four. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good four for me, because I, yes, I do. I think a lot of this film. Yep. And uh, 
I'll watch it again and again. And this makes me actually want to really seek out the first one. I need it for the collection. I don't pay a great little amount of money for it. But. It should be down, wouldn't you think? I would think. I think like it's I, said, I don't know if I'm going to run out and buy a Blu-ray of this one. Yeah, no, I won't either. I just like that it was on Blu-ray. DVD though. looks good, too. I think it was Dick a crime. That, is this thing. Okay. Yeah, I think he's in both movies, actually. Swamp Thing or Toxie, if you had to pick one. Oh, God. Um, so similar. <sighs> oh, he stumped people. I'd probably have to go this, just because I grew up with it, but I kind of grew up with Toxie, too. Right. They're honestly, like, tied for me, though. Like, I like them both equally, in a way. But I was just going to say, I think it's a crime that the cartoon only had, like, six episodes air. Is that all it is? I know the figures came with the VHS, I think. Yeah, it's something like that, because it bothered the shit out of me. Like, even thinking about it now, like, so many cartoons got, like, 50-some episodes. Like, why didn't that? Like, it deserved it, I think. I mean, I thought the cartoon was good. Did I mail you that VHS? No, you may have read the figure. No, I have a I have a mint VHS of two episodes. You expect to come in your way one of these days, along with uh, a burned copy. Set it on the shelf. We don't do that here, sir. I don't know what you're speak of. Yes, I can't yes. find it on DVD though. It's out of print. There is nothing wrong with burning an out of print film. Yes, you will so, get that. I have not. And next, pornography. Oh, 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 homemade. No, no, thank you, sir. Yeah, Heather's she's so she's little. Good, she's tiny. Is okay. I don't know why I have this talking about heights, talking but it's about is the swamp thing guy tall? Like, is he imposing? Yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Over six. I mean, like maybe like maybe like your height, dude. Ginormous in the trees. Birds, skyscrapers. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know how big I am. They always Gershaw. What am I up to? Like nine hundred fifty feet now, or something? What is it? You're in your ivory tower. Yeah, he hasn't said that for a while. What I'm surprised you didn't bring, bring up the Ivory Tower last week. Ivory Tower. I don't even know where that came from. Is that a <laughs> rap lyric? Is it what? Is it a rap lyric? It may be. I have no idea. Yeah, so I highly recommend this one, man. This is, yeah. your, this is your film, buddy. Yep, <laughs> it is. Um, we can obviously let everybody know when we get to the next episode, but do you have any idea what you'd want to do because it's your pick? It is my pick. Oh, um... Yeah, I just got to make sure you can watch it. <laughs> I can rent anything if I need to rent it. Yeah, well, I think we try to avoid that, too. Um, yes, it's a Bigfoot film. Okay. I think I do have a way for you to watch it. Yes, I, I okay. can say it if, if you're okay with it. Sure. I am picking, and it's like from 2013, and it's a found footage movie. No one's seen it. Everybody should see it. It's called The Woodsman. Okay. Are you cool with that? Sure. Do you want to do two or just that? Um, uh, let's do two. It's not very long. It's not real long. Okay. Um, go ahead. Do you, you want to pick the other one? Yeah, I have an idea for the second one because it's something that I said I wanted to watch again and Uh-oh. give it a fair shake. Oh. Hunting a legend. Yes! I mean, cool, yeah. The two movies that I want to watch again to give a fair shake to are that, and I finally want to watch West Coast Tapes. That was the uh, that was the other thing I was that was the other one I was going to ask, but I, I we got to well, make sure that's you want to do those two? Or? No, I think we okay. should do what we said because okay. you're going to see how good these two go together, like cheese and crackers, son. More squash. That's right, Justin Steely. He's watching it again. We're going to be getting a sequel to that too. Of Wait, what? Honey Legend or? Yes, sir. Okay. I think I'm friends with the director of. Uh, of the Woodsman on Facebook. I got to make sure. If I am, I'll tell him we're doing it. That's cool. But yeah, it's it's a kind of a one of those movies that that come in your multi packs. Oh, okay. And I caught it on Amazon the first time, and I bought the multi pack, so I think it's streaming on Amazon still. We'll check to make sure. But that's how I caught it, and I fell in love with the film. I'll be honest with you, even before we ever watch it, before you watch it. But, and then I found it on a multi pack pretty cheap. And I, this is a multi pack that I've, it's the same one, dude, that I've been wanting to get you for like a year and a half. And Walmart has not had it again. Bastards. Does it have the movie I was just going to bring up that I want to watch, The Dog Man? Yes. I, if anyone knows, anyone else, where I can find this damn Dog Man movie, please let me know because Amazon Prime has part two, but not part one. Yeah, with uh, Billy Joe Campbell. We need to get that for you because we want to do that. Yes. 
It might. I think you, I don't see how you would not like it. We'll see. There are just so yeah, many exciting, squatchy episode coming up, my friend. That's right. We need to bring them back. We need to bring back some found footage, some of these, some of these hidden gems that people don't talk about, especially if they shit on them. And I like it. I really want to talk about it then. Speaking of found footage, I've heard people rave about it. I never watched it yet. Have you watched found footage 3D? 3D? No, they have that at the Walmart, and I almost threw it in the cart. It's on Prime it's too, I believe. I'm gonna let you screen that one before I watch it. <laughs> you trust you know what me I that wish much? Okay. What I wish I over talked to you. I'm so sorry. No, I was just gonna say you. You trust me, okay? I'm honored. But oh, more than anything, like a brother. But what I want, wish they'd put on disc, and I think you enjoyed it too. You found it kind of effective. Mm-hmm. Was uh, the upper footage? Yeah. Oh my god, that's the most effective found footage we have ever seen in my life. And I wish we could. I I I, I want to do it on here, but I don't think it's available. I think it got, it may have got pulled, and I don't know what happened. I have talked. I'm friends with the director um, on Facebook, and I've talked to him. Very approachable, very nice individual. And I hit him up, and I may have been even for us, dude, years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, yeah, anything I can do, you know, I'll come on the show, whatever. And then a few months later, I hit him up, and I said, hey, what's up with the upper footage? And I uh, mean, you both watched it. And uh, he's like, oh, he, he was having some kind of court problem, I think. I you know. Uh, he didn't go into it. I wouldn't tell if he did. And he goes, we're still waiting on, like, a Blu-ray or DVD release. Man, if that ever comes up, I'll definitely put it in our group because I think a lot of people should see that. That's kind a movie that I honestly is missing or something. Yes, and I honestly, I told you at the time I watched it. I think every high school student should watch that movie. I agree. Like, like I think it should like, be in schools. Yes. And I'm not even shitting anybody. I'm serious. It's that it, effective. It's like you know, it's there's no paranormal to it. It's so disturbing. It almost feels paranormal though. And but, but it's just the darkness and evil of man and the cold. Yes. And going back to, I mean, we'll get off. I mean, I'll change just for a second. You get off. <laughs> I meant I'll get off the upper footage, but. We don't do that online on the show. <laughs> I am glad I didn't watch that movie now because I, for the first time, because I think having certain things in life that have happened, I mean, I was a much better, in a much better place with that when I watched it when I did. Uh, Roger that. I completely understand you. Because I think it would be a lot harder. Much like Megan is missing. you got to be in a certain mood in a certain I place. Know, like, I need to see that, too. Film. I know we can't. I think these it. are like... When we... I think with this show, we, we're we just so on, like, reading each other and everything. Yeah. And we talked about it earlier. What we really like are a lot of these lower budget, some of these films that no one's heard of or talks about films. And I think... The upper footage, and I'll go ahead and say Megan is missing. Those are the last house on the left and uh, house on the edge of the park of these modern found footage kind of films. Like, they leave you just, but these are more even of a cautionary tale. So there is a little bit more uh, positivity, if you can say that with it, you know. But they, they leave you just, and I know people say, oh, horror's dead. There's nothing gritty. There's nothing effective. Well, maybe to, maybe to you guys, but I think me we we seem to find quite a few. Watch Hereditary. Hereditary. Oh my lord. Um, is Megan is missing streaming anywhere? Do you know? I will definitely look and let you know. Um, I pulled the trigger. I bought the DVD on Amazon. It was only like four bucks. I, I need really to watch enjoyed that, it. and I need to watch I, the Kipsy tapes finally. Oh yeah, there's another there's another gritty one. I will be pay, if it's streaming. I want to pick Megan is missing for the show. Yes, there's no monster or cryptid in it, but I'm gonna, I'm still gonna pick it. I mean, yeah, I don't care. That's fine. There was something else I was gonna tell you I wanted to pick that has nothing to do with us, but it, but it's horror. I don't remember what it was, but look, look for me to be coming out of left field on something. I'll do. You'll... We'll both do it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I don't think what? there's anything else really. Shout outs to everybody in the group and to everybody who listens. Thank you. Love you guys. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Download Just... numbers are great. We don't have any Moto Talk, I don't think, this week. There's no Moto. Sucks. Oh, here's a random thing that Ooh, nobody will care about. Chad oh, Reed that? signed with JGR for uh, Monster Cup. Monster Cup. You don't know who Chad Reed is, people. Google it and rethink your life choices. I got a Squatch story the other night Ooh. from a group member, um, their encounter story. Ooh. But I didn't get permission to share it, so I won't. But this person is super cool. 
and I think we may have a we can see if he wants to come on and tell his encounter sometime. So we might go back into something like that. Maybe have him pick a Bigfoot movie. <clears throat> yeah, this, this will make your hair stand on end. I'll say oh that. God, very credible too. We've, We've said it before. And I'll, I'll say it now too. Even though we're doing movies, if anybody has an encounter that they want to talk about, you are always welcome to come on the show because we still. I mean, we all love encounters. I mean, I would love to have somebody that actually experienced something to come on. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, this was a good one, too. It's, me. it's again, I, I like our little group, and we've got some new members. Welcome, everybody. And yeah, you bring stuff up and talk about it, besides politics. I will delete that shit so fast. Yeah, I would, too. You would, too. And, and don't try to slip it by me by putting a meme up, because this motherfucker will see it. <laughs> yeah, don't meme Because my, like... My thing doesn't obviously doesn't read the text and images, so you could sneak it by me, but he'll be honest. As long as it's not a, as long as it's not political and it's not as long as it's not conspiracy theories of, of dead children, and I'm fine with about anything. This woman has a camel toe, sir. Who? Sorry, our henchwoman. Oh. Mister Winorski, sir. That is so not cool when I said it, but it's true. I mean, dude, that thing—it's like it's screaming at you. Ah! Adrian's bed. That's what it said. <laughs> Adrian's mad. That's what it said. <laughs> Funny, bread. <Brett. laughs> Sorry. Guys, uh, I rode 42 miles on a bike ride, and I am he full did. of Mountain He's Dew right now. I apologize. Gregory Gravesley, you said listening to the show made you miss the 80s. I don't know what that meant, but we love you. I don't, don't know tell who us That's awesome. Yes, Greg, we love you. I think that's who, that's who listens. Thank you. We really got to fluff him if he's our only listener. Yeah. Love you. He- and talk to us on Twitter. If Jesse won't answer you, but I will. I will. I'm checking my. Yes, I'm at the Jesse B83, and I'm going to check my Twitter more frequently. So please reach oh. out. I will. I promise you. If you tweet me tonight, check I'll out. answer you in the morning, sir. Check out my handle. It's called Show Dedication, people. I am at Cryptophile Show Killbot. <laughs> Proud of that one. I like you. You should be, sir. I tried to change my Facebook name to that, and it wouldn't let me. You are the heart and soul of this show and i'm not even kidding i'm the anus but thank you all right so we'll be back with more squatches we will it's gonna be squatchy next episode i'm looking forward to our roots it's gonna be squatch wonderful i'm trying to add, put those words together and it's not gonna work it's a snotty squatchy episode good night Scratchy. everybody <laughs>